Let's go on fishing Sunday. I am. Let's go. Let's go. I am. I'm in. What we? <laughs> you put that cat down. Yeah. The cat's in. I was trying to be a Bond villain. I apologize. Yeah. It's warm by this fire, but <laughs> uh, we're not even in the fire. We need to we jump cool, in the current. We got to cool off in the current. <laughs> I just want everyone to know, I mean, it, it, we say it all the time, you, you have seven best friends when you tune in to us every week. And it's wild, because we used to say that, but now it's so real. And, and, <laughs> and it was just a real existential morning, guys. <laughs> God, oh, existential. <laughs> Did you short drift them? Well... <laughs> That's a yes. That's what the Canadians say. No bueno. No bueno. <laughs> if there is a traditional Canadian saying, no, no bueno. bueno. <laughs> Welcome back to the Run or Pursuit podcast. You're in the current. Hey guys, how are we all doing? This is Dave, and around the table we have. I'm Adam. I'm Kyle. I'm Steve. I'm Will. It's Bucky. I'm Ryan. So guys, a lot of things going on in Pennsylvania right now. A lot of stuff. Pretty much the outdoorsman's Christmas of Pennsylvania. Like Adam's here with us? Oh yeah. For the current? For one. For one. For starters. Only once a year. Get your water wings on, bud. You're in the current, Adam. (laughs) (laughs) Pump up those floaties, bud. (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) No worries. I grew up with a pool. So, guys, what's been happening in the outdoors for everybody around the table? Well, I'll go first, I guess. (laughs) Go for it, bud. (laughs) Um, We got out on Sunday and got to shoot some rifles and other guns. Various sundry firearms. Various sundry (laughs) firearms. Yeah. So, if you listen to our first, I think it was our first Christmas episode or New Year's episode, and we talked about something that we wanted to do the following year. This was two or three years ago. One of the things I wanted to do was hunt deer with this old rifle that I had sitting in the case at home for, I don't know how long, 30 years or something like that. It was your paps or something? It was was our great... It was beyond that. Yeah, our great, great grandfathers in the Spanish-American War. Yeah, he was in the... the, um, uh, cavalry there in the Spanish American War in Cuba, and so he has this thirty had this thirty forty Craig. It got passed down on how many generate well, four generations. I guess I do know how many. It, my grandfather hunted deer with it, so he had you know holes drilled in it where he had a scope on it. But it hasn't been shot in at least thirty years. I, I don't know how long it hasn't been, you know, anywhere near any type of live ammunition. So naturally. I asked Will to be the first one to shoot it. Um, <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, it, of course. But he does it. So in brave the, of you. No, it's. The, I mean, the, the, it, there, the, there's there, there's there's significance. Reasoning. There's significance behind it. So the the first person to own the gun, his name was William Miser. The last person to shoot the gun, his name was William Miser. So it was only fitting for. The, the uh, you know the next person understood the current William Miser the current to shoot William it. Miser to shoot it yeah and uh, I come from a long line of a William long Miser. line of Williams and but, and Will stepped up to the plate and he turned did. his head and pulled the trigger it was no. I was a little nervous <laughs> yeah. I mean I you know I I'm not well known for my gunsmithing skills but I cleaned it the night before uh, and uh, I, I was fairly... really made me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> as the, the nervous as a guy not pulling I, the trigger I was, I was along for this experience and yeah. the, the best part of you setting Will up with the gun is that you're like here's the safety it doesn't work yeah. and then you handed Will the gun <laughs> yeah. unloaded unloaded yeah, yeah. yeah. no it, 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 you know, it needs some mechanical work to it it's obviously. a hundred year old gun yeah, it's a hundred couple years old so but the 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 bolt on it's smooth. I'll tell you that was, it's 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 not in terrible shape. But so we I bought you know hunting loads for it. Uh, there's only one place I could find ammo, and uh, got those Saturday. And sure enough, Sunday we were out shooting it, and it was 
a fine. I, I was just going to ask, it, how does it shoot, Steve? Terrible, but it was <laughs> it was fun. You know, it has it has sights uh, sights on it that don't adjustable work. Adjustable sights out to two thousand yards is what we called it. Yeah. Out to 2,000 yards. I couldn't see the target at 50. So I don't know how you see anything out to... T- I guess you're just lobbing it at that point. You know, if you're... if It's a, it's a flat shooting yeah. gun. I mean, it, it's a big round. I mean, it's not yeah. like a... I mean, I. it's not insignificant. It's not insignificant. It's, it's, not, a, it's a larger cartridge. It's, it's comparable mm-hmm. to what... 30 out six. Yeah. A little bit bigger than 308. Yeah, like a 270, 30 out six kind of round. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So, I mean, it, it's a, it, yeah. But, but it was, the significance of that for me was, you know, I've been looking at that gun since I was a kid. And I don't know if I'll ever hunt with it. I don't have a clue. No, he's not. Probably not. <laughs> um, but it was, it was, I, I don't know what the word for it is. Phil, give me a word here. Nostalgic. It was very nostalgic to to take something that I've seen for years and it's been in my family for years, and to have you know my blood relative with me to shoot that for the first time. The, the rightful heir of the throne. Yeah. For all intents and purposes, <laughs> this is true. The rightful heir of the throne. The one true shooter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There must have been some kind of backroom dealing that I ended up with it somehow. I don't know. It, uh, no, I heard no. you just it's took it. I had the birthright and I got everything else. So he gets one old crappy gun. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're taking. <laughs> oh. Now I want it back. <laughs> now he wants it back. <laughs> <laughs> After you found ammo for it, now he yeah. wants it back. I'll tell you, it wasn't. And I, I don't. The only ammo I ever buy is handgun ammo, which I, you know cringe at the cost of that and this stuff was 30 you know, something bucks a box for so, 20 of them for 20 of them so i wasn't real excited about shooting that very much but no nah, if you it was it was good to to get out and do that yeah it was and, awesome and it was yep. safe and that's you said it was a 30 40 craig 30 that, 40 craig yeah isn't the uh, we talked to to john from leatherwoods yes a couple of weeks back, and that's the same rifle that he used. It was about five years ago. I think yeah. he killed him. Just he has it on video. Beautiful, bike. dropped it. Yeah, dropped it in his tracks. Yeah, and yeah. you remember Justin Hodge? From- I, I think it was open sights too. By yeah. the way, so yeah. no scope needed. Yeah, he he's a sportsman. Uh, he's he's a sportsman. the real deal. He's the real <laughs> deal. Yeah, thank you, Stevie. Uh, um, not not so much. Uh, Justin Hodge, we had on a few a few weeks back. He. Um, Took a ten point, I think, a few years ago with a Craig. So people use them still. It's not. It sounds like you're in good company. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. No, I, I liked. It. It's a it's a cool shooting gun. It's kind of smooth. It doesn't it doesn't beat you up. It doesn't punch you. It's kind of a clean hit. I don't know how to describe. Yeah, that. like you guys let me shoot a couple rounds down down range with it. You owe me three bucks. By yeah, the way. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's. For, I mean, like the technology of that day, isn't that crazy? Is like we haven't changed things that much for a bolt action rifle. Mm-hmm. Like the trigger was smooth, it was a long trigger, but yeah. it was smooth. The bolt, bolt was good, you know. It's just it's neat to see where we've come for a hundred years, That's and it's a good not point. that far, right? You know, like they when compared they did to it, other things, yeah, compared to other things in a hundred years, like you know, we haven't been able to improve that much compared to these guys that created that stuff at that time. Yeah. So, yeah. I found that Stevie has a very sweet shooting 22 pistol. Yeah, you tried Oh, I tried hawking it from 50 bucks. For no, it, it was 100 bucks. Was it 100? Yeah, I pulled out 250s really? for it. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, now I'm having second thoughts. It was <laughs> double your pleasure. Oh, jeez. Yeah. No, I shot I shot three shots out of it and I whipped out cash for it. Mhm. Yeah, you declined though right away. Yeah, uh no. No, not Stevie turned down cash, cold hard cash. Yeah, uh, it's you know, this is the time of year where, um, if you're shooting, if you don't belong to a club, even if you do belong to a club, I'm sorry, I'm going to retract this. Uh, but this is the time of year where shooting benches get full. Like you're standing in packed. line, you're yep. ju- you're waiting around, and and this is. not you're not exactly so we kind of wrestle with this the last couple of years we kind of talk about it like 
some people wait to the last minute to shoot and, and other people, uh, you know, like to try and get it over with, but it's probably the perfect time to do it because you're not too far away from the start of the season, mm-hmm. you know, but oh. you're <laughs> it, like, it, yeah, so it's we not shot irresponsible. Full, uh, so when this comes out, we shot a full Sunday before opening day, right. full week in yeah. between so there like you're saying you know if you if we did find something that's catastrophically wrong with optics or with the load that we're using you know you have a week to kind of figure that out work it out mm-hmm. yeah instead of sunday afternoon all the stores close at five you know five six seven o'clock at night and opening days the next morning you're kind of out of luck if something's not working right 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 you might be going to open sites <laughs> <laughs> there were people at the range that shot a couple times and there were folks that were there like us that were there a couple hours you know that were making sure everything was down and, and, and we this is the first time for me going to one of the state what is the game land mm-hmm. shooting ranges which yeah. is a huge benefit for being a sportsman in pennsylvania that, yeah I mean, that's a really nice range yeah it is and there's I mean, a lot of them around this area too. I mean, they're not oh, sparse. Yeah. Like three, four, three. There, it seems driving, to be like one per four. county almost. Like where every other county, it seemed like when I was looking at the map. So that might be. They're yeah. all like from where I am. The closest ones for me are all an hour away. Like they're all, whatever. Triangulate them all. They're yeah. All, yeah. 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 Makes sense. Roughly an hour away. But but yeah, very nice range. 50, 100, 200, 300. That's not all of them are the same. Yeah, the yeah. one we went to one was we went to, stretched right. it out. And we did. We stretched it 200. Will shot at 300. So You don't need to, but like after my Texas experience, I wanted to just see what I could do. Well, uh, we started out in the 50-yard range. And then we're looking over at the benches for the 100. You couldn't get in. And we couldn't get in. And the 200-yard range was open. So we're like, might as well try it. Yeah. So yeah, We're definitely dialed in a uh, little bit high uh, at 50, which is kind of, you know, you're a little bit high and you're probably right on at 100. And then 200, found this out, we were, all, we were both high. Yeah. So which, it's kind of... It's kind of weird. We're high at 200, and then your lo- that lob kind of comes back down into 300 yeah. area. Yeah, it's a parabola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hit 100, you hit 300, dead on, and two, you're a little bit high. Yeah. Yep. But we're high at 50. Well, then I have no idea. Like we're kind of shooting an S curve. We're kind of shooting. <laughs> <laughs> we're kind of shooting flat at fifty hundred and up, up at two hundred, back in. So is that a testimony to the new rounds that they're that they're coming out with now, or are the guns are both? I mean, I mean, Will was shooting a thirty out six, which hundred and eighty grain bullet, which is a little bit heavier for that. But I mean, that was pr- that was a proven round in World War One and two. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is where it gets really, really crazy. And, and when, it, when you're talking about guns, every round or every different round has its own kind of trajectory. And, and you know, why you want a flat shooting long range round versus a, a short, you know, closer big pumpkin ball with, with more kinetic energy. That's kind of the spectrum is like, you know, you, you can have a big ball, a big round with a lot of kinetic energy, but it's not going to go as far. Or you could have a lot of powder with a, a tiny bullet, which is just flat, sh- shoots, shoots flat, fast. And real far, and blah, blah. So all these factors, and it's where it gets a little bit crazy. And uh, I think for deer, whitetail, Pennsylvania, you know, big Relatively mountain. short range. Yeah. You don't, you're not going to, you know, 150, you know, 200 yards is, is, a, is a poke. You know, anything from, you know, 50 yards and in is going to be yeah. your average shot. Mm-hmm. Unless you're hunting big open fields, which right. most of PA is a lot of rolling hills and w- heavy woodlands. Right, right. That's why you want to find the best of that, that spectrum. That's where you're going right. you to kind of dial be, it in. You don't necessarily need to be the little, you know, soft lead pumpkin ball from muzzleloader type round. But you don't necessarily need 7 millimeter mag or... 308 or you don't, you don't have to have that yeah. but they'll they'll do the job so you gotta land somewhere in the middle like i don't know 30 30 
drop the mic. <laughs> Easy, bud. <laughs> Easy. Wow, Dude, people I, get just as personal about the, the rounds like now did. too. <laughs> I'm learning a lot of things tonight. Well, What's that? I'm learning a lot of things. People get personal about their rounds, like it's. Well, Phil, for for the thirty thirty, that's like Pennsylvania's deer hunting round. I don't know how it was for out. I, I don't either, but so they I call mean, that the the brush gun. Yeah, like you know yeah. I mean? a I mean, thirty thirty. That and the thirty five Remington are like the go to round, which I never heard of. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like most. I mean, if you talk to, especially like, I don't know, guys who are in their like sixties and seventies now, like your first gun was. That's what you inherited. Those guys yeah, like, gave yeah. us all that. Yeah, they had yeah. A, a model ninety four thirty thirty. Yep. You know, and because it, you know, it was just the gun. You know, it was a relatively accurate gun, brush gun, and the ammo was prevalent. So, all right, you say thirty thirty. Then where, where would a three oh eight and a three oh six come in? Like, where do they come in on the spectrum of rifles? And they're what's slightly a, larger. What's a three oh six? That's why I'm asking the questions. So, but so all the the thirty thirty, the three oh eight, the thirty out six all shoot a thirty caliber bullet. Okay. So the projectile is of a thirty caliber. That that round that is it, okay thirty. So Damn. everything else is is pertaining to Point the powder three, uh, or the casing size. Okay, so then the 08 is it is it casing? No, the, 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 it's like years. There was military years. There's all kinds of different. Yeah, and then you get like the. There's different. They're just they, okay. some of those numbers. Don't. If it's a metric number too, yeah. because Germany developed it, you know the, the eight millimeter Mauser. Because they, it was a German type thing. Uh, I don't mean to get us into math either. It, it's no. all, just, they're all very similar in actual bullet size. It's like Dave said, it's the amount of powder that they use and the actual casing that is more. They that just changes. At that time, they were standardizing them. You know what I mean? They were, they were creating these, these charges that they, it worked well for different reasons. And 30 odd six, you know, was an awesome, great did, gun. Did the trick for what a yeah. parameter that they were building that round to. Yeah. Oh, God. I mean, it was the thing for a long time. So, so we, let's say Phil and I go out and each buy a thirty out six tomorrow. You should. <laughs> Two of them matching thirty out six. How many different rounds? Different manufacturers' <laughs> rounds? Would you expect we'd need to shoot through before we figured out this is my? 50 to 100 yards. One. <laughs> One. Yeah, you, you, uh, okay, so 30 out six is tricky. What you want to determine, pound for pound, a lot of people say it's the most versatile gun uh, because you can shoot a. Uh, oh, is it good down to 120? 110, 120, something like that. Green bullet? Yeah. All the way up to 220. 220? Yeah. Which is yeah. a big honking bullet, mm -hmm. and and that, but it's the same powder charge pushing those bullets. So they're doing so it's slower. they're moving at different speeds. So, but your, some of your other guns don't have that kind of wide range versatility. Yeah, they don't have enough powder to push some of those bigger balls, and it's something as simple as you can find them anywhere. You can go into any Walmart or any other like that's part of store the versatility. Thirty out six, yeah. you're gonna find something. Any yeah. hardware store, whatever. But, yeah. yeah, if you're a traveling hunter, a two seventy, a three hundred eight, and a thirty out six, you should be able to find that our hardware store and type. Twenty two. Yeah, yeah, and twenty two. You should be able to find those rounds. Might not be your exact federal ballistic tip that you shot that works perfectly, but you'll be able to find something close that's, enough to get yeah, you through the hunt. Something comparable, but. And, yeah. But to answer your question too, Stevie, uh, a lot of exactly what weight round you're shooting, it, mm -hmm. uh, some of that comes down to personal preference and it also comes down to just what you find shoots best out of your gun. The best recommendation would be to buy, you know, a couple different weights and go to the range and just, just yeah, you want to shoot your gun practice. in, yeah. just pick around, shoot your gun in. And whatever that is, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, when you have a second or two to, to kind of compare, then do that. Like I've shot out of my gun. I started out with Winchesters. Now I shoot Federal. I just found it was just a little tighter. It wasn't, it's not that it was bad and I shot a bunch of, you know, 
a bunch of dough with the and the reason for the 30 out six being the, the versatile gun it is is that it can go from using those smaller grain bullets for different game up to the larger grain bullets for a larger game so like we was quantify yeah, yeah. we was shooting like a 180 which is definitely in the middle which is fine for whitetail good for elk you might want to go to the the 220 for moose but it's still out of the 30-06. Right. Mm -hmm. The same powder charge. Well, same, the same casing. Same, same case, case, same powder. Yeah. So. Interesting. So, so basically, the short answer to that question is shoot a lot of stuff until you find what you like. I, I would bet in today's world, you can go pick up a fine rifle that... You know, Thompson, actually most of the manufacturers make a one MOA guaranteed rifle now. So out of the box, it should shoot one inch uh, at 100 yards, three bullets at, you know, within one, one inch circle. Wow. Um, a, a decent optic, pick up an off the shelf ammo to start and you will be more than accurate to harvest an animal. You will, you'll definitely be within that hmm. one to one and a half inch with any box of ammo off, off the shelf. It, when you want to tighten up those groups at 100, that's when you're going to start looking for other, even there's going to be multiple brands of bullet in 180 grains. And that will shoot differently within each rifle. And the other crazy part, not, not to just... Or just gonna pow on yeah. the the variability is cold bore shooting versus hot. You know, warm, you, sh you put a couple rounds down, that warm barrel is gonna mm -hmm. shoot a little bit different. Yeah. So I mean, it, there's no end to the madness. But like your first couple shots, you know, your first three shots should be pretty accurate. That's what you shoot. That's what you're aiming for. Is just having that that nice tight you know somewhere around the bullseye yeah and uh at, at whatever distance you need it to be so it sounds like a third variable is in there and that that's now in the manufacturing process they've got it so well that every gun shoots similar from the manufacturer as well yeah i mean they're given the guarantee that it, it shoots one minute of angle at 100 yards that, so that, that's that's pretty consistent manufacturing then yeah. if you can guarantee that i i would say i think so yeah oh, absolutely Yep. Yeah. Wow. What a rabbit hole we could <laughs> continue down, like with the, oh, the heat factor. It, and just, that's important. It is madness. Yeah. I mean. And like what we were talking about, like the the farther you start stepping out the yardage mm -hmm. is when that accuracy comes into play. You know, when you're a gun that shoots so close at, at 100, your groups, your groups are going to spread out at 200. They're going to spread out at 300. So if you want it tighter groups at 100, because then it's going to be, in theory, tighter groups at 200, at 300. So, yeah. Dare I even get into asking, like, the difference between a HMR round or I, where, where do I even start with that kind of stuff? Or not just Bucky back out of this hole now? I mean... I don't even know what you mean. Like, that like there's just a 17, 17 HMR compared to a 22 LR or a... 20, you know, yeah. I mean, I go. Yeah. I look at an ammunition rack, basically, guys, and it, I might as well look at the Rosetta Stone. It's a foreign language. <laughs> I mean, it, it, like, and once I, I, I need to crack the code, and I'd be okay. I mean, it's intimidating for a newbie. Sure. All, all those extras are coming out of like what the manufacturer or who invented it, or what country of origin it came out of. Yeah. That like that other that other nomenclature like a three hundred three savage or a three hundred three British, mm -hmm. you know yeah. it's it's that's all extra, you know, if you stick to the main things to get into it like a two seventy a three hundred eight a, a thirty out six or a thirty thirty, and you know like the two seventy is a two seventy Winchester, you know because Winchester invented it back at whenever in the time period, but it's still a two seventy now. A Remington makes a 270 Winchester gun. You know, it's it's the chambering of the of the gotcha, gun. Gotcha. But there's also like so to what he's saying, there's a proprietary factor which you, it's going to blow your mind and send us down whatever rabbit hole. But there's a proprietary factor where 
uh, Weatherby makes a 270 and it they don't subscribe to the same you know yeah that's the wildcat range like then yeah like the Weatherby would be technically a wildcat cartridge where it's your different case like the neck on the casing's different than a, a regular 270 you can't use the oh. Weatherby 270 so how do you a, know two, that so if yeah I'm, that's, if I'm, that's, that's exactly, exactly where I'm if getting if you look at, at the barrel of the gun okay it better be marked with what cartridge you should use. Okay, if it's not marked, don't shoot there it. You go. There it is. And will it give me a range though? On because you just said a range that some of what like it, a, a two seventy can shoot a different size no, of a it'll, round. It'll stay thirty out six Springfield. And uh, that's the cartridge. Yeah. Okay. That's PR. So when you're talking about the bullet weight, that cartridge accepts that bullet weight. Understood. Even though it goes from 120 to 200, okay, it's still a 30 caliber bullet. So the, so the diameter would it's, be th- it goes to 30, 30 cal. 30 cal. Yeah. Did I say that right? Yeah. Nailed it. All right. Yeah. It's a lot. It's it's a it's mind blowing. The the for me, the more I dig, the more I get confused, and then need to yeah. like tread water to understand what I just learned, and it keeps going. That's this is why I need you guys. Ryan, you were up at the cabin this weekend, right? This is the closest I've been to not shooting a bear. What? what I don't know. Mean? Figure that out for yourself. So you saw one and you <laughs> let it go. <laughs> so <laughs> I've, I don't. It's, I, I wouldn't say I officially go bear hunting. Yeah. Uh, but when I'm at my cabin during bear season, you hold a gun and walk in the woods. I'll go. I'll go out that after or that morning of the first day for a couple mm-hmm. hours, hoping and to see. This a bear. year was no exception except for the snowfall. There was definitely over a foot of freshly fallen wow. snow. Wow. Is that, that much uh, up there? Yeah, we got a good bit. Woo. I spent most of the time sitting in a tree stand worrying about getting out uh, uh. of the, the parking area that I slid into uh, <laughs> off, the, off the side of the road. <laughs> I actually pulled into the a- the area where I always park, mm-hmm. and I came to a stop, came to a sliding stop, and I got out of the truck and i looked and there was just you know no plows obviously on these old logging roads and stuff in the state forest um there's two ruts in the road from the couple of vehicles that have already gone through cut first rivers? tracks there was only one it was a creek <laughs> actually it was a swamp it was a but brook two two ruts and i don't think i i just felt like i didn't get off the road far enough I'm like, you know, nobody can get around me. I, yeah. I need to get over a little bit more. Yeah, you don't want to be that guy. So I got in the right. truck and I went to back up. And instead of going uh, backwards when I put it in reverse and hit the gas, I went sideways down uh, into the ditch even further. And I stopped the truck, shut it off. I looked at my son. I said, let's go hunt. <laughs> because if we're going to roll the truck into the woods, let's do that after the hunt. Like, if I did it now, I just couldn't enjoy you myself. The day. Yeah. 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 So uh, we we left the truck there and uh, went into the woods to hunt. We cut tracks. They weren't fresh, but we cut a set of tracks walking into the woods. So I knew there was bear in the area. I showed my son the tracks and we yeah. talked about it a little bit. Got through the swamp. I only fell one time. Nice. Which is great because I've never in seven years, I think, of hunting up there, I've never seen the swamp as bad as it was. So that's pretty obvious based mm-hmm. on the summer that we had. Yeah. That it was going to be bad. And the fall. And the fall, yeah, that was. I was hoping that the storm, the snow, was going to really help, but it just Not it yet. made even the dry patches of ground, uh, well, wet because they were covered in twelve inches of snow. Yeah, um, and it made the water colder. I think. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. I had the knee high <laughs> neoprene boots, and I was in great shape because those my feet stay warm in my muck boots. Mm-hmm. But that's only until you fill them with icy <laughs> swamp water, and then they just, then it's just they, it's like they don't help. That has they the don't work. Yeah, <laughs> has the opposite effect. Yeah. Anyway, um, got to the stand. I think I only made it about three hours before I was like, I got yeah. I got to move around a little bit. My legs are cramping up because they're too cold. But of course, an hour into my sit for bear, beautiful eight point buck comes walking oh. in. I mean, just. Dead to rights, walking right to me. Do you like think they the know, like, oh, it's guarantee bear it. season? Guarantee <laughs> it. Guarantee it. He it, came He came right in looking all majestic, walking through. The, I mean, at that point, the snow was still hanging in the, oh, like, yeah. the branches of the trees, all of the mountain, 
laurel was covered every Picture little leaf perfect. and limb. Oh yeah, it was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a Hallmark Channel movie. Yeah, that's what it looked like. He sauntered off, uh, gathered my son and our stuff, and decided to try to find a different way out of the swamp. And when we left, we had cut tracks of very, very fresh bear tracks that had gone through the swamp, threw up a bunch of mud. Like you could tell he was kind of, he was moving. Yeah, in a hurry. He was hauling the mail, as they say. Um, we followed the tracks for a little bit till he crossed the swamp again. And I said to my son, okay, we're, we're done. I'm not going back through that a third time. And on our walk back, I ran into another guy who was hunting. He asked if we had seen anything. And I said, well, we just cut some fresh tracks back there in the swamp. Yeah. He goes, yeah, I imagine you would have. And I said, oh, yeah. He noticed tracks crossing the road, which I'm assuming were the tracks I saw in the morning walking yeah. in. He saw these tracks cross the road and go up the mountain. He said he parked his truck, followed the tracks up, jumped the bear at the top of the mountain. <gasps> And saw it start down the mountain. So yeah. he, again, was, was slowly... I mean, it was the perfect weather for it. He was trying to put a stalk on this thing. Uh, just couldn't get close enough. And he said, it couldn't have been but 15 minutes ago. I watched it cross the road. And I'm kind of uh, doing the math in my head. Where we stepped on those tracks was about 14 minutes before uh, I'm talking to this guy. So it was right I there. was moments away from having a bear running directly at me when I'm in the mountain laurel of the swamp. I'm not sure if it would have been a good thing or not. I, <laughs> And it was a big set of tracks. Was it? Well, with that, uh, with that thirty thirty, you had been perfectly fine, right? Well, because I was bear hunting, I actually had a uh, twelve gauge slug gun. So you did? Yeah, I wouldn't have had no problem with them. Oh yeah, that put a hurting on them. You're putting some lead down range with that, bud. Yeah, it, it, it would have worked out. I just don't know that I would have liked to have looked up and seen. You yeah. know, I'm going to estimate based on the track that I could easily fit my hand inside of. Uh, I'm going to estimate him at 350 pounds or better. I'm not sure I would have wanted to see that freight train coming through the, yeah. the swamp at me. Choo choo. Uh, I <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but it was beautiful weather. I just love being out um, in that you know freshly fallen snow. Down here we got the rain and the freezing rain and the sleet on top of all the fresh snow. So even by the next day, you, you it was all crunchy and kind of gnarly. This was two days after the snow, and it was still like light and fluffy. You couldn't even hear yourself walking through it. I love, oh, wow. love being in the woods when it's like that. Wow. And you got your truck out. Surprisingly enough, now when we left, we, you know, I pulled out and I looked at my son. I'm like, see how easy it is. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't let on how nervous I was about the fact that we were probably going to roll this thing in uh. the woods. <laughs> but um, we d we didn't have any issues. Got right out and. Um, it was only when we were leaving in the daylight and I'm looking at the other vehicles that were parked and hunting that I realized, yeah, most of these trucks up here actually have chains on. Most of the trucks? Yeah. Like yeah. the four-wheel drive trucks? Most of the chains. guys had chains on the, on the wow, tires. Wow, so smart move. I'm going to probably invest in a pair of those because yeah. this is about the second or third time in, in eight years that I've been up and had an opportunity to use some chains. Now, have yeah. you... I don't remember if you've said this before. Have you bear hunted before up there? I'd say in the last five years, a grand total of about eight hours eight, worth eight. of bear hunting. Just a couple hours okay. for a Saturday. Yeah. It's the weekend before, Some and occasionally hunting. we're up there. Yeah. And if we're up, I'll, I just told my wife, you know, hey, I'm going to get a bear tag. I'll go sit for a couple hours. Like I said, this was the closest I've been to not getting one because of the how recent those tracks were um, that that we cut. But there was a a bear shot probably less than 300 yards away from me two years ago. So yeah. you're right where you need to we're, be. We're in the area. Like when that. I run my cameras up at the cabin, I get as many pictures of bears as I do buck. Oh. So I'm, they're around. Did you uh, go to the check station at all? Because I, I know like guys that go upstate for bear and they're, you know, it seems like more of a, yeah, they went out and hunted, but like the highlight of their weekend is to actually go to the check station, especially if they didn't, weren't successful. That's kind of a, a big deal. I talked to my son, see if he wanted to do it, because I thought it would be cool. You know, mm -hmm. get some get some video and some pictures and talk to people. Um, but he was actually more excited about the prospect of going squirrel hunting in the afternoon. So we, we got back to camp, had a nice big breakfast, and we're trying to decide what we're going to do. And he would rather go, go at the squirrels yeah. if he could. So we changed up the calibers, switched everything up to 22s, and... Uh, just went out squirrel hunting. Any luck there? No. No? No. 
They hide, <laughs> they hide better than bears. <laughs> <laughs> did you uh, did you carry your hand cannon? No, only because I didn't think of it till I was up. If if I if I would have been smart, I would have had it on me just in case. But we went to a different area anyway because I didn't want to run the risk of getting the yeah. truck stuck. So we went to a spot that uh, much less likely I was going to see a bear. I hop. <laughs> what, what is the caliper of that uh, handgun that you uh, carry from time to time? That would be the Taurus Raging Bull. Um, it is the Little 454 one. Casul. <laughs> it's the one that makes Dirty Harry's gun look like a pea shooter. You said 454. Wow. It's massive. Take yeah. like those hot six rounds that you guys uh-huh. are talking about yeah. and just load them into a revolver. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty much, I mean, you got to make them so a little bigger round. you shoot that with one hand then basically. It's <laughs> a strong wrist <laughs> behind his back. You can only yeah, shoot it back. one time with one hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you have two shots. <laughs> <laughs> this was a pretty good year so for for bear hunters, right? I think this was the second highest first for, day total for or something bear. like that. <laughs> for bear. Yeah, um, we we shared those numbers out. It was a real good first day, and I yeah. think a lot of it had to do with the weather. Like I said, and it that's was, just it was beautiful because out. people being able to track them better against the white background. Well, you're gonna be able to see them, I think, quicker. Yeah. Um, you're gonna be able to to obviously see the tracks, so you'll know. And and I mean the big. The big way of hunting them, the traditional way of hunting them, I guess, in Pennsylvania, sure. or at least the most common way right now, is drives, yeah. right? So you get big camps, big groups of guys get together, uh, put on drives, um, chase them out. So if you've got a lot of freshly fallen snow, you can tell fresh tracks from old tracks, mm-hmm. then you know if you're in the area where there's fresh bear sign. So, hey, let's put on our drive right here, and you're a lot Good. more likely, I think, to kick them out. Have any of us ever taken a Pennsylvania bear? No. no. Nope. Nope. None of us. I've just seen one. Yeah. I really want one. <laughs> yeah. Man. That's I feel, crazy. I feel lucky just to have seen one out in the woods. Yeah. So it sounds yeah. like next year, the weekend before Thanksgiving, we're going to all go up to my camp. I'll tell you. As it, a big group. It just goes sounds to show you, like, as many hours as this group spends hunting, and for no one to, for, for none of us, you know, year after year after year, and, and none of us to have been taking a bear. It just is a testament to those that have, you know, oh, yeah. that, that how much work it is, how much dedication. It I've is. got two uncles. And I mean, my dad grew up doing bear hunting Yeah, um, in the area like Centralia, Mount Carmel, like coal country, yeah. cent- central Pennsylvania. And between my dad and his two brothers, they've hunted bear pretty much all of their adult life. And it was just one uncle killed one bear. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Bucky, what are you shaking over there? I'm shaking the better the hunt topic cat over here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, make sure while Bucky's shaking that topic cat, you head on over to betterthehunt.com. Pick go, up go to betterthehunt.com. Pick up a bow mitt. I could have used one. Use but coupon yeah. code Rut River twenty. Get twenty percent off that off. that bow mitt or That's as many of them as you're getting. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Go and get them. Bucky, you got that yet? We got it. All right. And, and you guys aren't going to believe the coincidence of this Again? question here. But what is your go-to Pennsylvania deer hunting gun come this opening day of rifle season? What are you guys taking out? Wow. I think Bucky was tapering with the hat. <laughs> you never know. I might have More recalibrated. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. Uh Ryan, why don't you start? Let me start this off, and I'm sure it's going to come as a big shock because you guys are all thinking I'm going to say 30-30, but that's no longer my gun. My daughter killed her buck with it when she was 10, so it's officially her gun now. Oh. I'm taking a 7 millimeter. Oh. Uh, first day, I'll be carrying a 20-gauge slug, and then depending on what properties I'm on, I'll be carrying a 300 Weatherby if I'm hunting like field edges and have a longer poke. So... Is that the same 300 Weatherby you wouldn't let me shoot the other day? I offered you to shoot, but you declined. Yeah. I, oh. But I will be carrying a... Thanks for refreshing my <laughs> That's the same one he's selling for 100 I also bucks have a, yeah. uh, a 357 Magnum on, too, that I would love to kill a deer with. So I, just gotta, I, I should just like put away everything else and just carry that to make it happen, but you never know. That'd be a cool story to tell. 
you have to yeah i mean you have to practice with that that's a that's a hard yeah i mean i i shoot it quite regularly and uh but yeah like it's still it's it's kind of taking the aspect into archery season then you know you still have to be 15 to 20 yards yeah 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 so could be interesting Adam? Adam, you got a gun? So, yeah, um, I will be running old reliable, the uh, the 06 that I've had since I was 12. Oh, my. Winchester Model 70. Beautiful. Yeah. That's a good gun. I'll be out chasing them with a little 12-gauge slug with gun. With your slug gun? A little, yeah. little 12-gauge. Yeah, a little 12-gauge. <laughs> oh. A little Revington 870 with the slug barrel on it. Classic. Classic. Two and three quarter inch. Is that the is that the same size as what you let me shoot the other day? No, it twenty gauge. That was a twenty gauge. Yeah. Oh man, I don't know if I could do the oh, yeah. twelve gauge. Like, yeah, boy. Especially with uh, I'm shooting light fields, uh, which I believe they're five hundred and thirty four grain, so they're packing packing a good punch. It's basically a car. It doesn't. Matter. <laughs> He's, sli- yeah. He's slinging a car down ring. <laughs> hey, it works when it hits him. I guess. <laughs> All I do. know is you need to have a good grip on that gun when you start hey, flinging yeah. those slugs down. I learned the hard Jeez. way last year. I got a good backstop. Yeah. I'm a deer? A, a deer? <laughs> no, I'm saying you myself. A deer behind I'm- you? <laughs> He's larger than average. <laughs> what about you, bub? Um, I... I also kind of dipped my toe into the the twenty gauge shotgun arena. It's the uh, the Savage two twenty. It's a the twenty gauge uh, bolt action. Yeah, and it's super accurate. I I'm very very impressed by it. Um, but normally, I have two guns that I would normally be packing. Uh, one is a thirty out six for whenever I'm sitting or. Um, Mm-hmm. In a stand or on a ground blind, uh, but if I'm walking, I have a 308 uh, Ruger compact rifle. So it's the 16 inch barrel. Yeah, that's, that's, sweet. Your, that's your dog's gun. Yeah, Ruger's compact <laughs> right? right on. It's a sweet little gun, though. The compact Ruger. I, I'm I love that thing for yeah. walking. You can't beat it. You know. But uh, yeah, the, no, I'm, I'll probably take the shotgun to start just because I never did anything with it yet. So is that a big he, Pennsylvania thing, like as far as slug guns go? Because Wisconsin, it wasn't that huge. No, uh, it, it's not. Um, it's just but, you guys. I guess it's coming more, me being more prevalent, um, especially in our area, Lancaster, York, Adams County. Uh, some of the state parks are slug gun only. I think out towards you, Kyle, yeah, there's the, some slug gun areas only yep, also. The special regulations area, like by Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, is shotgun only. So that's part of it, too. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, Maryland, it, like, it's a lot of a lot of the land slug gun only. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it's just kind of a... It's, it's because of the urbanized area. The urban sprawl is forcing more slug gun areas. Right, right. Yeah. You, you see a lot of that in the Midwest, too, because of how flat it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You, the, the rifle cartridges tend to travel a lot further because they don't drop nearly as fast as the, the slugs. Yeah, I know down in Illinois and, like, Indiana and stuff, slugs are real big. But just in Wisconsin, we didn't really have a whole lot of that when I was growing up there. Cool. What about you, Bucky? I don't think we ever got around. What do you care? Yeah. In? I'm not going to have too much of an opportunity to get out there and, and 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 make it in you know i don't talk about it a lot but again second fall in a row you know the the work schedule and what they want us to do is is not coinciding very well with with hunting and getting out i mean i can't go out monday i won't be out the weekend after as it's the first of the month and that's when Mm. people like to do so you're just things. saving it for late archery i got you yeah primitive arms i got the atlatl ready to go <laughs> um no got your buck skins no i i it just um, calls them skins <laughs> no. I'll, I'll use a 12 gauge slug gun um i use a two and three quarter inch slug or round the three inches just tear me apart and and uh 
that's the same one that gave you a little kiss last yeah, year. Yeah, that gave me the three inch ones gave me a real big kiss last year. <laughs> and these I, I I I'm calmer with and, and a better shot with. So cool. Hey guys. Hey Bucky. <laughs> when we're not figuring out what we're carrying out for the first day of Buck, where can people find us? They can find us at ruttonriverpursuits.com. They can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Rut and River Pursuits. And you can also check us out on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Spotify. Also, don't forget to check us out on the YouTubes at Rut and River Pursuits Podcast. Good luck to everybody getting out there. And while you're on Facebook sharing the pictures of whatever it is you were able to harvest, make sure you tag us in the picture so we can get a look at it. Love seeing the pics and the stories. Peace. Good luck, Later. guys. See ya. Rig and wheelers. And that's one of other things, too, like bullet weight and everything else is are going to have a factor because you know, the heavier the bullet, the more it's going to drop. And the lighter the bullet... More. I'm going to keep yeah. that in, bud. You just knocked it out of the park. <laughs> Eat it. Indeed. So how do you know that? So Yeah, that's exactly where I'm If you at look that. at the barrel of the gun, okay. it better be marked with what cartridge you should use. Okay, If it's not marked, don't shoot there it. There you go. This is the closest I've been to not shooting a bear. What? What's I don't that know. Mean? Figure that out for yourself. So you saw one and you <laughs> let it go. That's that's gas balls. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck it in there. <laughs> <laughs>